Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be giving you 50 reasons why you should be reading The Farcier Trilogy by Robin Hobb. If you haven't seen already, I have done one of these videos before but for the Bone Season series and so I thought I would continue with one of my next favourite fantasy series which is this one by Robin Hobb. If you don't know then this book follows Fitzchivalry Varsia who is the bastard son of a prince and at the beginning of this book as a young child he is abandoned on the palace doorstep to be returned to his father. However his father who is currently the prince in line to the throne, he abdicates the throne in shame and just leaves. This leaves Fitz to be raised by the stableman because people don't really know what to do with him since he is technically of the royal family but not entirely until he grows up a bit and the current king decides that he would make a really good royal assassin because his status means that he can attend royal events but not be too focused on because he's not entirely a royal. This is very much a political fantasy and it does also feature magic so there's lots to go out here but instead of bubbling on let me give you the 50 reasons why you should be reading this book. If you haven't read this series, then hopefully I'll convince you. If you have read this series, then hopefully you can relate. But let's just jump right in. I think you should read the Farsier trilogy starting with Assassin's Apprentice by Robin Hobb because, as I mentioned, we are following the royal family, which means that everything in this has a sense of grandeur to it. Everything is regal, everything is just a little bit fancy amidst the mess of the world, and so it's just quite fun to read about that kind of thing, I feel. This series has an incredibly vivid setting. I really struggled to imagine the place that I'm actually set within a book. I had absolutely no problem with it in this one. Bookkeep is a main setting for book one and it's just described so well down to how it smells, how it feels to be there. The atmosphere is just impeccable. We do of course have Fitz, our cinnamon roll of a main character. The Fool, who is just absolutely lovable in all of their quirky ways. Burick, the adoptive father figure and lover of animals. Ketrican, who comes in later in the series but is just the badass lady that I love to read about. And Verity who is Verity. <laughs> There is actually really good mental health rep in this series. You see very clear moments of depression, anxiety and also PTSD. I think it's really rare to find good and really clear mental health representation in fantasy books and I just love it. The series has a very heavy tie with animals. Part of the magic of the series is based on animals and it's just lovely to read about. Granted a little bit terrifying at the same time but you win some, you lose some. <laughs> the series includes really complicated politics, but not in a way that makes it difficult to keep up with. It's actually really easy to wrap your head around what's going on, despite all of the various different strands to the politics within the story. And it just makes for such an intricate story to really dig your teeth into. If you decide to continue with the series, you too can experience this. Yep, dragons. Solid reason. The theories you can come up with. Oh my goodness, it's so fun to try and figure out what the hell is going on. Because you do get hints. There's lots of foreshadowing. But sometimes you don't even realise they're there until far later on. And then you think back and remember. So then once you know that and you start reading more of her books, you start looking for those hints and just sit there theorising about what's going to happen. If you end up enjoying this one, then you've got about 15 more to follow, if not more. You've got plenty to go at. <laughs> but alternatively, if you do feel like you need a break before continuing through all of them, this trilogy can stand by itself. It is, however, incredibly satisfying to have this. You cannot tell me that is not goals. You get to wonder what your name would be if you were born into the Farsia line. The Farsia family tend to name their children after the attributes that they want them to have. So it's just really fun to think what your name would be. <laughs> this kind of has the magic school trope in a very twisted way. But it is there. <laughs> There's also zombies of a kind. Maybe. They're not called zombies, but they're very zombie-like. <laughs> you will never have an author make you feel so strongly towards characters. Whether it's love, whether it's hate, Stay tuned to find out. As well as the theories that I mentioned figuring out earlier, you have literal riddles that you can try and solve throughout the series. The Fool speaks in riddles a lot of the time and a lot of them are prophetic riddles. And so trying to figure out what the hell they're on about is just part of the fun. <laughs> we basically have a cinnamon roll character floundering his way through while swinging an ax. Let me tell you, he is definitely not perfect at everything and that's kind of refreshing to see. <laughs> at the beginning of each chapter, there are tidbits of history and it just makes it feel so authentic because you're literally reading a history book about the world that we're reading about. There are two types of magic in this book and both of them are just fascinating. You too can feel just as attacked as that book just attacked me. 
As I was saying, there are two types of magic in this book and they're both just fascinating to read about. You have the skill and the wit. Learning the differences between how they're used, what they are, and also the attitudes towards both of them is just so intriguing. It really is. It's also an incredibly unique type of magic. I haven't come across any other fantasy book that has something like this. There are similar things because it is ultimately a connection with the mind, but it's different depending on whether it's a human, whether it's an animal, and also what you can do with it that makes it feel incredibly unique. This series definitely has very strong themes of court intrigue and the games that people play at court, so if that's something you're into, definitely read this one. You get to see Fitz grow from young boy into late teenhood, I think it is, so you are with him for so many years and you can't help but love him. It really is baffling to think back on the first book, having read all of them, because the difference in where we are from beginning to end is just incredible. And let me tell you, the sense of accomplishment you get when you've read these three books is second to none with how big the second and third book are. You also get that sense of accomplishment five times over once you've read all of the books, because that's a lot of books and you definitely gain bragging rights for that. If you do end up loving the series and you are a book collector, there are so many beautiful editions of the series out, in particular an illustrated edition, which I think would just add another element to the series that would be really fun to see. The friendship between Fitz and the Fool I love them. <laughs> You'll come across a whole host of adoptive father figures in this series, considering Fitz's own father just bows out and leaves. Have some adoptive ones instead. <laughs> if you're a fan of annotating, this series is for you, because there are so many things, not only the theories, not only the riddles that I've already mentioned, but there are just so many little notes of wisdom, so many iconic scenes, so many moments that you want to remember, that this is just an annotator's dream. <laughs> it feels like a different take on assassins, because as I said, Fitz is the royal assassin, and that's a large part of the series. However, it's definitely not overridden with scenes of Fitz just murdering people. It's almost as if we know of it, but it's kept just as quiet as intended. He is a secret assassin and I feel like that's done really well. Robin Hobb is just an absolute staple when it comes to the fantasy genre. She's very much up there with the likes of Sanderson, Rothfuss, Martin. If you're a fantasy fan, I just implore you to read her. Because of how long you spend with these characters, this is a story that just buries itself into your soul. There's no getting rid of them. And the characters themselves are so incredibly complex that it's just baffling, like it's absolutely mind-blowing. The depth of these characters is no straightforward, good or bad, and it also takes you a really long time to decide if you actually like somebody because they're all a little bit awful, but also it's understandable and it's just it's so good to contemplate. <laughs> it really does make them memorable and authentic. You will never see a greater appreciation for horses. This is their time. I don't think I've ever seen the love and the innocent obsession of a young boy portrayed so well on page. There are so many hardcore fans for the series that if you read it and you love it, you will definitely find people to fangirl, without a doubt. If you like the arranged marriage trope for political reasons, this series, full of it. Absolutely full of it. A direct quote from my reading journal in which I write down my thoughts as I read, for book three, sad from page three. Every single time you think you're reaching a lull in the story at all, the tension will once more begin to rise again, and it really does keep you on your toes. Just to throw in some more tropes, we also have the found family trope, which... I think we all love. <laughs> the series does not shy away from the gruesome details, we see lots of fighting, and also just like... injuries. <laughs> Now it might sound like a weird thing to say like, yeah, it's pretty gruesome at times. It's not overly excessive or anything like that, but it does just feel real because it's not going to shy away from the pain people feel from the way that these wounds do hinder them in what they're doing. And I've come across a lot of books before which have people being wounded but don't really show the after effect of that. And I just think that this series does a really good job of showing that and it just makes it feel even more real. If you're a plant person like me, herb lore is actually a really key theme throughout this first series. If you are attacked while reading this book and it's not by the book itself, as long as you're reading books two and three, then you've pretty much got a weapon to hand because it's like a brick. You didn't hear that from me though. And finally, if you ever ask me for a fantasy recommendation, then it's probably guaranteed to be this one. So you might as well just get ahead of yourself and do it before you ask. 
And so we have our 50 reasons to read the Farseer trilogy. I, again, absolutely adore the series. So I hope if you haven't read it yet, then you have been convinced. I promise it's nothing to be scared of. And if you do decide to try it, then hopefully you'll fall in love with it just as quickly as I did. If you are already a fan of Robin Hobb, tell me if there are any more reasons that you would give down in the comments. See if we can convince some more people in the process. But yes, for now, I'll just let you get on with your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so let me know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description, box you'll find information to all the books I've just mentioned, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye!